Hello, welcome to the dark side of the library. I'm your podcast host, Carrie, and I'm here with my spooky co-host, Katie. Hello. (laughs) We have been doing lots of fun book research, as you can imagine, and we are going to bring you our picks for interesting dark children's books for March 2023. I love kids' books. They're my favorite. (laughs) It's too bad that our brothers and sisters don't necessarily let us read scary books to their kids. We do anyway, but (laughs) only if they like it. We're not trying to terrify our nieces. Right. Yes. Or on Halloween. Usually Halloween is a good time to like sneak the spooky books in. (laughs) It's acceptable. (laughs) So I'm going to have trouble today because I do collect dark children's books, picture books especially, but I don't buy just any one and I don't do any graphic novels. There are several this episode, but I just love any little kids books about bats. And I think we have one today. (gasps) Oh, I'm excited. I didn't know we had a bat one. Oh, I know we have a Mothman one. So I'm excited about that one too. (laughs) Well, let me show once I figure it out. Ooh, my face is too big. Let's do it this way. There. Okay, why is that the first book? Oh, because I did it in the wrong order. (laughs) We could do it reverse if you'd like. Uh I'm trying to look for a different book. There it is, Ancient Night. (sighs) Oh, cute. Okay, it's by David Alvarez with David Bowles. Ancient Night is a hardcover picture book. Comes out March 14. It's meant for grade levels preschool to age three. At the start of things, the elders say... The universe was hushed and still. The moon alone shone bright and round in the star-speckled dark of the sky. So as you can see, this is going to be a nice bedtime book. If you can read it with a relaxing voice, you can make your kid finally pass out and go to sleep without having to resort to Samuel L. Jackson-style profanity. (laughs) So here in Ancient Night, or Noche Antigua, David displays his immense talent with full-color illustrations. It's a twist on two Nahuatl traditions. Katie, you're the anthropologist. How do I say that? That was pretty good. Okay. The rabbit, which the feathered serpent placed on the moon, and, uh uh-oh, Yaushu, the lord opossum who ruled the earth before humans came. Oh. Oh. This lord opossum stole fire from the gods to create the sun. So it is a poetic nighttime book based in mythology from Mexico. Those books don't usually get published in English, so I'm definitely going to have to grab this for my collection. It's Ancient Night by David Bowles, and the illustrator is David Alvarez. That looks really pretty. I I am excited to look through it when you do receive that book. Mm-hmm. My first book today, speaking of poetry, it is about the epic poem, Beowulf. It is Beowulf. <laughs> like a little girl? <laughs> yes. <laughs> she wears a cute little bear hat cape. It's adorable. Uh, so this comes out March 21st. Granted, the original epic can be quite dark and eerie and gritty, and it it's great. So we threw this one in here. It's a graphic novel and it is a retelling of Beowulf. It is featuring a gang of troublemaking kids who must defend their treehouse from fun hating adults or a fun hating adult, just one at least. I hate fun hating adults. I do too. And they are trying to instantly turn children into grown ups. Shame on them. I That's never not okay. wanted to grow up. You're I agree. entitled to your childhood. Yes. So listen, hear a tale of Malo munchers and warriors who answer Candy's clarion call. <laughs> Somewhere in a, gene- a generic suburb stands Treeheart, a kid-forged sanctuary where generations of tireless tykes have spent their youths making merry, spilling soda, and staving off the shadow of adulthood. Ugh. I know. Uh, One day, these brave warriors find their fun cut short by their nefarious neighbor, Grindel. (laughs) I love this so much. Who can no longer tolerate the sounds of the mirth seeping into his joyless adult life. As the guardian of gloom lays siege to Treeheart, scores of kids suddenly find themselves transformed into pimply teenagers and sullen adults. Oh. 
that's the worst period of time. Nobody wants to go back to their oh, pimply God. years. I want to block, <laughs> block it out of my memory. I know, like, I didn't want to go back to that. Uh, so the survivors of the onslaught cry out for a savior, a warrior whose will is unbreakable and whose appetite for mischief is unbounded. They call for Bea Wolf. I love this so much. I think I might have to get this for myself, too. <laughs> So this is Beowulf. It's by Zach Wienerschmidt, and the illustrator is called Boulet. And now I want to look them up. They sound awesome. Oh, I think it's Boulet. Boulet? Oh, I could be wrong. Yes. I'm excited. It's cute. Very cute. What's your next well, book? I have an even cuter book. Oh, no. It is called Bat Cat. Oh. And it has a pink bat cat on the front with a ghost munching on something. And an <laughs> angry bird. I'm not sure what's happening. And a cat trying to get the bat. There's a lot going on. So, <laughs> Bat Cat Volume 1 is by Maggie. Oh, I'm, excuse me. Maggie Ram comes out March 28. It's a graphic novel series for emerging readers, grade level 1 to 4, age 6 to 9 years. It's by Amulet Books, and it's about accepting yourself and others. So, Bat Cat, who apparently is hot pink colored, <laughs> Loves being all alone in their home on Spooky Island. I get that. I love my alone time, but I'm social. Up in their treehouse, they pass the time playing video games and watching TV, as we all love to do. But when Bat Cat suddenly finds himself haunted by an annoying ice cream stealing ghost, they visit the local island witch for a spell that's going to remove their ghastly guests permanently. So Batcat goes and gets a ghost be gone spell and they have it in hand and they travel across Spooky Island to gather ingredients. They go to the cavernous caves where the bats tell them they're too round to be a bat. They go to the whispering cemetery where the cats will help only if they commit to being a true cat. But Batcat is neither and that's what makes them special. That's Batcat volume one of an upcoming series. It's by Meggie, Ram or Rom. And it comes out March 28. It looks cute. That looks really cute. My next book is called Curses Are the Worst. Scared Silly Series. It's the first in a series of books. This is like if you mixed Goosebumps with the Bailey School Kids, which I've never read, but I did read a lot of Goosebumps. This is for middle grade readers. And the author is Elizabeth Old. Olberg. I apologize. I probably said that incorrectly. So it's about four unlikely friends who must band together to save their town from an evil curse. Pretty straightforward. So warning, this book contains a very scary and silly story about a long dormant witch's curse that's been unleashed on the unsuspecting town of Cauldron's Cove. It's revenge over 300 years in the making. Hey, better late than never. I love these publisher notes. They're so cute. When Reagan, Sophia, Bennett, and Darius unfairly get put into detention, they know something is wrong. And they're right. This, deten this detention is far from ordinary. Their science teacher, Mrs. Stein, believes that by using these kids' DNA, she can create an army of, quote, perfect students who oh, have <laughs> please make me a perfect student in math oh yeah or all the subjects i want to be the best at everything so the teacher uses sophia's smarts reagan's heart bennett's likability and darius's loyalty and tries to create a monster clone but it ends up wreaking or wrecking havoc around the town and getting the real kids in actual trouble so will the kids be able to save the town or will they be cursed for eternity? And there's only one way to find out. And fair warning, dear reader, you should definitely read this with the lights on. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> so this is called Curses Are the Worst from the Scared Silly series. This comes out March 7th. It's by Elizabeth Yulberg. We are streaming live to Dark Side of the Library YouTube. We have a viewer, Sean Jones. And they are commenting that the ghost on the cover reminds them of Slimer from the Ghostbusters cartoon. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Hello, Sean. So my next book is called Dear Mothman. Yay. 
I've never personally felt the need to write a letter to Mothman, but let's see what's going on. <laughs> the author is Robin Gow, G-O-W. This comes out March 21, which is tomorrow on our recording day. It's a middle grade novel written in verse about a young trans boy dealing with the loss of his friend by writing to his favorite cryptid, Mothman. Oh, cute. This book, Dear Mothman, is by Amulet Books also. It's intended for grade levels 5 to 9 or reading age 10 to 14 years. So halfway through sixth grade, Noah's best friend and the only other trans boy in his school, Lewis, passed away in a car accident. Lewis had been adventurous and curious and always brought a new paranormal story to share with Noah. And together they daydreamed about cryptids and they shared discovering their genders and their new names. So after his death, Noah is lonely and yearning for someone who could understand him and starts writing letters to Mothman, wondering if he could understand how Noah feels. And he starts looking for evidence of Mothman's existence in the vast woods surrounding his small Poconos town. He's going to make his science fair project about Mothman, despite his teachers and parents <laughs> urging him to make a project about something quote-unquote real. <laughs> So Noah's trying to find Mothman and starts to make friends with a group of girls in his grade, all Hannah, Molly, and Alice. Now they welcome him and he's starting to open up to, to each of them, especially Hannah, who Noah has a crush on. But there's always a butter. We wouldn't have a reason for a book. Strange things start to happen and Noah becomes oh, sure of Mothman's existence. <gasps> this oh. sounds like a good book. Oh my gosh. It's cute. It's Dear Mothman by Robin Gao. Comes out March 21. I love that cover, too. It's really pretty. My next book is called The Girl Who Built a Spider. It comes out March 21st. This is by George Brewington. It is a fun-filled, action-packed, middle-grade novel. Three young inventors are offered the chance to work at the renowned Dr. Flax's lab where dazzling science, new friendships, and killer robots await. This is for reading ages 8 through 12. So when Teresa Brown wins the Charleston County Middle School Science Fair, she receives the opportunity of a lifetime. An in invitation to celebrated scientist Dr. Flax's laboratory and a summer spent building the invention of her dreams along with the second and third place finishers of the science fair Teresa is whisked off to a world of robots excitement and danger dr flax claims his inventions are going to help stop climate change and make the world a better and safer place but is that really true and can Teresa and her friends get to the bottom of the mystery of his laboratory this is called The Girl Who Built a Spider, and I'm really curious. There is a cute little robot spider on the cover, so there's got to be a spider happening sometime in that book. Which is why I'm not going to read it. <laughs> <laughs> it looks really cute. So this is called The Girl Who Built a Spider. It is by George Brewington. It does sound like a good option for reluctant readers, because if you hook them with action, they want to read the book more than if it's just, oh, I have to read a book. Yes, yes. <laughs> My next book is called Hanging with Vampires. Oh, Who wouldn't want to do that? It's by Insha Fitzpatrick, illustrations by Lilla Bullocks. And what is this about? I did not research this. It is discover everything about vampires in this laugh out loud nonfiction handbook oh. packed with spooky legends, fascinating history, and weird facts perfect for middle grade readers and mythology fans. Are vampires real? Well, we know the answer to that question. Ah. Who was Vlad the Impaler? Do vampire bats ever feed on humans? Find out in Hanging with Vampires, a field guide for the curious and adventurous. The publisher is the very esteemed, renowned Quirk Books. Comes out March 28. It is Hanging with Vampires, book one of two in a series of a totally factual field guide to the supernatural by Insha Fitzpatrick. That's cool. Sean Jones over on YouTube said, I already saw a big spider in the movie Wild Wild, Wild, Wild West, which is a very underrated movie, I must say. <laughs> <laughs> My next book of today is, this one's really cute, and I love how they acknowledge this is right before Easter time. It's my first How to Catch the Big Bad Wolf board book. Mm -hmm. 
it, it's adorable. Come along into an enchanted world to catch one of the most famous storybook mischief makers, the Big Bad Wolf, featured in all kinds of stories. So after reading her favorite stories, one little girl hops into the pages determined to trap the wily wolf with the help of Little Red Riding Hood, Goldilocks, Hansel and Gretel, and more beloved characters. Everybody gets in on the action. Yes. That's Even... why there's a gingerbread house on the cover. I, I know. Love. I was like, why is that? I thought that was the little pig's house for some reason. I was like, that <laughs> doesn't seem right. <laughs> so it's filled with delightful nods to classic nursery rhymes and fairy tales. Cute rhyming texts and playful lures and traps. It's a very cute book and it's supposed to spark reading and learning and imagination in a really young age because this is for baby to three years old. They do have other books as well if you wanted to check the other how to catch dot 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 series like how to catch Santa Claus, how to catch the Easter Bunny or a witch or a unicorn. There's so many of these and this one's really, really cute um, and makes it uh, like the big, big bad wolf more playful so this is my first how to catch the big bad wolf this is by alice walstead and joel and ashley selby selby yes illustrate and it comes out march 1st it's an my next book is the ojo woja a horror mystery or whatever <laughs> it's by magdalene visaggio illustrated by jen saint ange the grade level is 5 to 7, or ages 10 to 12 years. I've never heard of the publisher, Balzer and Bray. Hmm. Hmm. It's the first in a new graphic novel series from indie comic stars Magdalene and Jen. It's a coming-of-age story about the transformative power of friendship. Oh. And it's about an immortal demon with the power to take over the world. Yay! Oh, yay, best. But mostly it's about the friendship thing. So, welcome to Bolingbrook. It's a small town just like any other, or so 8th graders Val and Lanny think. They're the best of best friends. They love the same comics, they watch the same shows, and they're always there for each other. Which is important when you're queer like Lanny, or on the spectrum like Val, and they, you don't seem to fit in anywhere. So they have a school project about their hometown's supernatural history, but it leads to a for real ghost sighting. Val and Lainey realize Bolingbroke might not be as boring as they'd always thought. Well, there's that. But after a run-in with the resident middle school Queen Bee, who of also course. happens to be Lainey's former friend, they decide to take things to the next level. And they accidentally summon the Oja Woja, a demonic presence connected to a slew of mysterious tragedies throughout Bolingbroke's sordid history. Now all heck is broken loose. The whole town's acting weird, and there's nowhere left to turn. It's going to be up to Val, Lainey, and their small group of friends to return things to normal. But if, and here's why I want to read the book, if normal is even something they want to return to. Ooh, I like that's that. That's the Woja Woja graphic novel book. It comes out March 7, so it's already out. Cool. What's next for you? This one also came out March 7th. It is by Suzanne Young. It's called What Stays Buried. It has a very creepy creature in the very back. Shadowy figure. Ooh. Uh, so this is her first middle grade reading book. It's for reading ages 8 through 12. So it's perfect for fans of Bone Hollow and the Peculiar Incident on Shady Street. N neither of those I have read. But if you have, now you know. 12-year-old Callista Wynn will lose her ability to speak with the dead on her 13th birthday. Oh, usually it's the other way around. Like, she'll get the gift on 13th birthday. Instead, she loses the gift. And is she upset about losing it or relieved about losing it? That's a really good <laughs> question. That's a great question. I don't know. So there's only a few weeks left. And children of course, have started to go missing. Uh, when Callista meets the, quote, the tall lady, an angry spirit with a grudge against Callista, her family, and the entire town, 
She knows she's found the ghost responsible for the disappearances. It's now up to Callista, the only person who can see the tall lady, to stop her. If she doesn't, Callista won't just lose her powers. She'll lose everyone she has left. So it sounds like she has to get the quest done before this thing actually happens to her. This does look really creepy, and some of the ratings that I did briefly glance through say it's actually quite a creepy read. So if you're looking for extra creepy, this is the book for you. It is What Stays Buried by Suzanne Young. My final book today, I'm jumping back to the beginning of my pictures. It's <laughs> Wretched Water Park. It's part of the Sinister Summer series. It comes out or came out March 7 by Kirsten White. It's book one of a four book Sinister Summer series meant for grade levels three to seven, nine and nine years and up. It's a middle grade mystery series that's spooky, creepy and filled with gothic twists. Ooh. So meet the Sinister Winterbottoms, brave Theo, her timid twin named Alexander and their older sister, Will. They're stuck for the summer with their aunt Saffronia who doesn't know how often children need to eat and she can't use a smartphone and yet whose feet never quite seem to touch the floor when she glides or walks. <laughs> when Aunt Saffronia suggests a week pass to the Fathoms of Fun water park, they hastily agree. But the park is even stranger than Aunt Saffronia. The water slides look like gray gargoyle tongues. The employees wear creepy black dresses and deliver ominous messages. That sounds fun. Yeah. An impossible figure is at the top of the slide tower. People are disappearing and suspicious goo is seeping into the wave pool. Ew. Oh, something mysterious is happening at Fathoms of Fun and it's up to the twins to get to the bottom of it. The mystery that is not the wave pool. Definitely not the wave pool. <laughs> but are Theo and Alexander out of their depth? This sounds like another really fun read for perhaps reluctant readers. There's a lot going on. Action packed. Little mystery. So I'm delighted that Wretched Water Park by Kirsten White came out back on March 7. Kirsten White loves amusement parks because her uh, <laughs> YA book is also an amusement park. So I, she must really like creepy amusement parks. I wish that was a thing. All right. So that finishes up our list of all the kids books that are coming out in March 2023. Stay tuned for our other episode that we'll probably live stream shortly uh for the young adult novels and you can check out our previous podcast episodes for adult fiction nonfiction, etc and i will be doing comics and graphic novels as well uh we publish every wednesday and we also do mini sods on fridays so make sure to keep those on your radar uh spread the word let other people know about dark side of the library thank you so much for watching especially those of you that are live with us and we will see you guys next time Thanks.